Welcome back to Awesome Possum Hobbies Games. This is Chris, and today is Magic Arena's release date for the Cat Lost Caverns of Ixalan. I'm going to open some packs today, as well as play some games, but this video is all about the pack opening. I bought the, the bundle, so you guys can check out how the cards are put into the bundles, as well as to, to see how the, the distribution of rares and wild cards, etc., etc. And then I'm also going to give a little bit of uh, ideas about how I want to be using the rares in some of my decks as well as some deck ideas. Check it out. So here we go. Uh, Lost Caverns at Ixalan. It is a release day and I bought the set and had an extra couple packs that I use, uh, extra couple gold that I used to buy some packs. So I've got a total of 52 packs plus the five golden packs. So let's check out the regular packs to start with. To me, it's all about the regular packs because this is where the, the meat of the uh, the system is. So as I start the video, I have three rares and four mythics and I have two little notches on my rare wild card. So let's see what we get after 52 packs, uh, packs plus the five golden packs. Let's go. I'm gonna be opening these one at a time, talking about the individual cards. Hey, it's a mythic in the, the Millennium Calendar. I don't know if this will see standard play, but I know of a couple decks that this will be in just for the uh, commander. So I can't wait to see how this card works out. But of course, let's... Uh, let, let's see how it goes in the future. Next pack. Amelia, Amelia, Ben, Benavides, Aguirre. All right. So for one black, one white, two two, legendary creature, vampire scout, ward, pay three life. So who wants to target it? It's going to cost him at least three life. But it's only a 2-2, so most likely it's going to be just worthwhile for them to go ahead and block it. But wait, there's more on the card. Whatever you gain life, Amelia explores. Then destroy all other creatures if it, its power is it exactly 20. So, so you're able to pump it up anyway. Or if you explore enough, which you could gain one life at a time. One life, one life, one life. That's a lot of explorers triggers. You, of course, you don't want to put most of those cards in your graveyard. You want to put them, leave them on top of your deck so you're just constantly showing that same card. Boom, boom, boom. Plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Then if it's some miraculous way that you got 17 counters or a combination of counters and um, other bonuses, you can destroy all other creatures while just leaving good old Amelia left in play by herself. It would be cool if this had some other abilities. I think it might be cool in the deck, but you know, like we're gonna see with a lot of these cards, it's gonna be a wait and see approach. I cannot wait to see what some of these cards are gonna be doing for building decks in the future. I know a few cards that I cannot wait to get. Like this guy, and Nim Pakal Thousand Moon. Well, for one white, one red, one colorless, it's a one, two legendary creature, human soldier. Whenever you attack with one or more non-known creatures, put a plus one, plus one counter on a min pakal, then create X one, one, one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens that are tapped and attacking, where X is the number of plus one, plus one counters on a min, a, a nim pakal. Wow, that is a lot of text for a card. What it says is, if you don't deal with this card and you attack with other creatures that are not gnomes, this guy's gonna get bigger and a lot of one ones are gonna get tossed at you every single turn. Talk about a big target on her head. Let's go on to the next card. Next pack. Get lost. I think this card will see some play. Get lost for one white, one colorless. Instant, I love that hearing that instant word. The sword target creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. Its controller creates two map tokens. Map tokens, you know, they uh, are just token artifact maps that 
Pay one and tap it, sacrifice this artifact, target creature you control explores, activate only as a sorcery. If you time this right, this, you know, map tokens can just sit around and wait and do nothing. Because if you can continually kill your opponent's cards, man, if this this card's great. It, the only thing that would make it better is if it exiled, but you know, there, there could, it could be some instances where you'll target your own things with artifact matters decks, but that's still too early to tell. But at the same time, I cannot wait to put this, like slot it straight into my white some of my control decks. I think this is a great card. Next pack. Brass's Tunnel Grinder for one red, two colorless legendary artifact. When Brass's Tunnel Grinder enters the battlefield, discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards plus one. So if you have Descend, there you go. You get to you get to throw away a card, and then you get to draw as many cards as you threw away plus the one that replaced that the Brass's Tunnel Grinder. And then at the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, put a blur counter on Brass's Tunnel Grinder. Then if there are three or more four counters on it, remove those counters and transform it. Hold on to your seats. This card gets cool. Tekalatan, the Searing Rift. Legendary Land Cave. Cast Produce Red. Whenever you cast a permanent using mana produced by Tekalatan, Searing Rift, discover X, where X is a spell's mana value. Great. So now, if you go through and play, play a three drop with this, now you get to discover three. What? It's like a copy spell, except for, for spells that happen to be in your deck. No way. This guy, card can be ridiculous. This is going to go in a few different decks. First of all, you're able to descend. Second of all, you're able to throw away cards that, oh, look, here's my Atrexa that I don't want to put right in my graveyard so I can cheat into play later. And then I'm going to go ahead and descend and then all kinds of stuff just keeps happening on this card. I think this card is fantastic. Will it see a lot of play? Probably not. I think it's going to be underrated, undervalued, underplayed. I need a set for three of my my red the decks that play red and commander just so this can go in it because I think it's really, really cool. I think it could be abused. You know, while it's system play, you can tap it for artifact matter deck that matters decks. And then on top of that, it does some cool stuff. You know, yeah, keep track of whenever your stuff goes to the graveyard. Ha! On your turn, if you're red, that's gonna happen constantly. So yep, can't wait to see this card in play in decks. Next pack. Millennium Calendar. Don't think this card is going to see a lot of standard play, though I know a couple of Commander decks this will slot straight into as a huge invention. It just, you know, when you double the number of time counters on it, yeah, you know, when you got two, four, six, eight, you know, two, four, six, two, four, eight, 16, 32, then the, those early parts are not going to make a big difference. But the big but. You know, there's a huge but uh, involved. Um, you know, when you start having like you know, 128, then you double it. Two, uh, you know, 200 and, um, you know, 256. And then so on and so forth. You know, two more turns or two more activations. The Millennium cal Calendar is one use of games. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. I'm sure someone will try to make that work. Next pack. Fabrication Foundry. Artifacts Matters deck. Yep, this card's going to go slot right into a couple of my artifact decks that are uh, in Commander. Will it work in Standard? No, it's a wait and see. Fabrication Foundry for one white, one colorless artifact. It's not legendary. Taps to produce white mana. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate an ability of an artifact. Okay, great. And then you can pay a white and two colorless and tap it. Exile one or more artifacts you control with total mana value of X. Return target artifact with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. Man, that Brass's Digger is so going to go work well with this card. You know, you know, put some stuff in the graveyard. Now I want to go through and cheat it back. Sounds, sounds like it. There, there might be some options in the future with that. Here we go. Next pack. 
Throne of the Grim Captain. This card has a pile of text. I, when I saw this in the when I opened the pack last week, I was like, what in the world is this card? Throne of the Grim Captain is an artifact, two colorless, legendary artifact. Tap it to mill two cards. Craft with a dinosaur and Merfolk, a pirate and a vampire. So cards that do not normally go in decks together. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this. So you're probably gonna be playing green because Merfolk and dinosaurs are in green. You're probably gonna be playing red because rat pirates are generally gonna be blue or they're gonna be red. And then you're gonna be playing black or white because vampires are always gonna be black or white, generally gonna be black. And then you pay for, if you can craft it with those things that are in your graveyard to create the Grim Captain. Legendary Creature, Skeleton, Spirit, Pirate. 7-7, seven, seven, Menace, Trample, Life, Link, Hexproof. When the Grim Captain attacks, each opponent sacrifices a non-land permanent. You may put an Exile Creature card used to, to craft that, the Grim Captain on the battlefield under your control, tapped and attacking. Holy cow. Wow. If you're able to go through and, and transform this, you are going to win games. You are going to cause someone to have a bad day. The odds of you doing it, Probably not very good, unless there's going to be a lot of ways that I don't know, get buried alive. You know, one black, two colorless sorcery that goes against three creature cards and put them in the graveyard. There you go. You got three of your four creature types, but you still need one more. Lots going on with that card. Don't know if it's going to be any good, but if you were able to do it, good on you. I'd love to see the video of it. Next pack. Yeah, yeah, there you go. We're adding to our mythic pile, which is fine. I need lots and lots of rare cards, though. Rares. I need rares to finish decks. Speaking of rare, just heard one. So speaking of rare pirates, Breaches, Eager Pillager, one red, two colorless, three, three, first strike. Love that keyword, first strike, especially in red. Whenever a pirate you control attacks, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. You get to create a treasure token. So it can speed you up. Target creature you can't block this turn. Great. Make it so it can get through and not have to worry about getting uh, getting blocked. Or you can exile the top card of your library. You can play it this card th this turn. This card is cool. I already have slotted it straight into my, my red exile the top card of your library deck. But will it see standard play? I don't know. I think a 3-3 first strike for... Three mana is pretty cool. Will it dethrone some of the other great three drops that are in red? Mm, probably not, but we'll see. We'll see. Next pack. Poetic Ingenuity. Someone just commented on uh, one of my other videos. They cannot wait to see this de this card played in a dinosaur deck. Well, I, I think it might be kind of slow. We will see. So it's an enchantment. One red, two colorless, whenever one or more dinosaurs you control attack, create that many treasure tokens. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, create a 3-1 red dinosaur creature token. This ability triggers only once each turn. Red, green, artifact, dinosaur deck? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I you know, the, the, the treasure tokens are going to speed you up quite a bit, but I don't know. Okay, so uh, treasure map. This card is a leftover from the old Ixalan days. This card used to be seen in a, in play a lot of the control decks. Will it be seen again in the control decks? I think so. I think so. It you know it's a two drop. The last really u useful utility true drop got banned, but will this one see play in? I think it will. You know, you know, you pay two uh, to put in play. One and tap, scry one. Put a landmark counter on treasure map. Then, if there are three or more landmark counters on it, remove those counters, transform treasure map, and create three treasure tokens. So early on, it fixes your draws. Fixing draws is great. You know, because Arena likes throwing a couple of land turns to you in a row right when it's important. So being able to scry and get rid of some of those lands, put them on the bottom of the deck will make a difference. And then if you have kept some of those treasure tokens because you don't always need to use them, you're able to sacrifice treasures to draw cards. Drawing cards 
wins games. Enough is said about that card. Next pack. Survey says, Tarion Soul Cleaver for one colorless legendary artifact. Equipment equipped cost is two colorless mana. Equipped creature has Vigilance. Wow, right there, I think that pays for the card by itself. I love Vigilance. I love being able to attack and have something available to be able to block. The, uh, the, the new dinosaur that gets stun counters to be like, well, I don't even tap. This is gonna be great. It gets even better whenever an artifact or creature is put to a graveyard from the battlefield. Your t your side or your opponent's side, you get to put a plus one pl a plus one counter on a quick creature. And then if you could give it trample, woo, a big saucy creature. You got to love it that you could go through and um, move that around, be able to give some plus one plus one counters. Of course, the counters don't change when you change the, where the artifact is. Next pack, Roaming Throne. This card as in the paper format is already seeing good good pricing of seven, eight dollars. It's gonna see play in commander for a four drop, roaming throne, artifact creature golem, four, four, ward two. As roaming throne enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, roaming throne, uh, throne hat is the chosen type in addition to other types. I wonder what, ha what happens if you choose changeling or is that considered to be a ability? Or a trait? I don't know. If a, tr a triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type triggers, it triggers an additional time. So those people who play... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Tribal decks will like this card. If you need to have an extra elf that's 4-drop for 4-4, four, four, here you go. And it just helps your other things do things later on. I think it's overpriced. I think it will drop in price here in the next couple of weeks. We'll see. Next pack. Treasure map again. Yeah, I don't need those. I don't need them. Another rare. Rares, I'm six rare, five mythics. Ogier talk, deepest foundation. Man, this card, six, six legendary creature god, vigilance. If one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, three times that many of those tokens are created instead. Let me read that part again. If one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, three times that many of those tokens would be created instead. Not double, triple. When it dies, return to the battlefield tapped and transformed under its owner's control. So if someone is able to kill it, spot removal or anything that doesn't exile it, it becomes a temple of civilization to land taps to produce white or or you can pay a white and two colorless transforms temple of civilization activate only if you attack with three or more creatures this turn and only as a sorcery you got a bunch of tokens time to bring it back i think this guy is cool i it's right now seeing pricing between 20 and 30 dollars i think this guy will drop in price a little bit and then when this says out of print, this guy will just climb, 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 because it's gonna go in all the token generation decks. It is a great card, fantastic card for those to to token generation decks. It's even good outside of that, have being a 6-6 six, six Vigilance that just can continually come back. Next pack. Magmatic Galleon. So, Raise your hand if you are disappointed with some of these vehicles that are in the set. I know I am, but there's always a but. This particular card is is all right. So for five five vehicle, you have to pay. You have to crew two. Crewing two is no fun. But when it enters the battlefield, even if you have no other crew, just fight damage target creature and opponent controls. So you're going to be killing something if they have creatures in play. Whenever one or more creatures you opponent controls are dealt. Excess not combat damage, create a treasure token. Second part, meh. But what comes to play? It's gonna do five damage. It's an artifact that's gonna sit in play. It's not really gonna be a target unless there's other creatures in play. So those artifact creature decks, artifact matters decks are going to like this card. Is it worth a rare spot? Five to do five damage and then it's gonna sit around. Ugh. I don't know. 
Another rare, uh, rare wild card, which I love. Gift out, Sun's Avatar for one white, one green, one red, five color. It's a seven, six vigilance, haste, trample. Whenever Gift out, Sun Avatar deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library. But any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I think this is the big payoff dinosaur for the dinosaur deck. I, uh, you know, a three color deck for something that's supposed to be a speed effective deck is going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. But, um, you know, for it to be splash, put a splash of white in there. And this is your big payoff card. The thing that you're going to be trying to get there. And I think that you're able to go ahead, go ahead and cast that pretty regularly on fourth or fifth turn. With that said, that white mana might be the part that slows it down. Let's wait and see. Survey says, Malcolm Alluring Scoundrel for one blue, one colorless, two, one flash flying. Legendary creature, Siren Pirate. Let's look at the text. Whenever Malcolm deals combat damage to a player, put a chorus counter on it. Draw a card. And then discard a card. If there are four or more chorus counters on Malcolm, you may cast the discarded card without paying his mana cost. So if you're able to drop this down on your opponent's, if you go first, drop it on your opponent's second turn, attack for third. By the sixth turn rolls around, you're able to be able to drop your your bombs into play without paying the mana cost. But there's a big but. If you have proliferates in your deck. It could be as early as fourth or fifth turn. Dropping a big bomb on fourth or fifth turn in, in standard is not bad. It's not bad at all. Especially if you're able to drop this on, you're on at the end of your opponent's second turn, you're able to go through and start beating them in the, the following turn because, and you're generally, they're not gonna be able to do much about it because you flashed it in. You know, if you timed it right, it could be good. Next pack. We're 20 packs in. So far, so good. There's a few cards I'd like to get a few more of. Here is the Belligerent. I'm kind of belligerent about getting it because I'm not a fan of it. For one red, one blue, two colorless, five, five, legendary artifact vehicle. Crew three. That's a big three. Whenever the Belligerent attacks, create a treasure token. Until end of turn, you may look at the top card of your library anytime you play lands that cast spells from the top of your library. So you have to attack with it. And it has to be crew three. And it has to not have some basic signals. So you're attacking with it like turn five as a five five, and you had to have another creature in play. It's a lot that I have to go right in order for this to be great. Am I missing something here? Leave it in the comments below. Next pack. Galta! This guy landed on me in one of my uh, one of my games at the pre-release this past weekend. And it it's a 12-12 trample. That's all you can say is it's a 12-12 legendary creature, elder Dra dinosaur trample. But then you know, the second part of text doesn't make sense for that format because you're not going to be cheating in the play. But if you're in a format that you're able to get it out while still having a bunch of cards in your hand, when Galt to the Stampede enters a tyrant, enters the battlefield, put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. You're like, oh, drop your entire hand onto the battlefield and watch your opponent swarm because you have 12, you have a bunch of targets. Uh, they're just going to get uh, bored by me. But, you know, it is what it is. So, 12-12, trample. Scary monsters. Big scary monsters. Next pack. Growing Rights of it Itlmach. This is a, another reprint that is awesome. I love this reprint. Growing Rights of Itlmach is a one green, two colorless legendary enchantment. When Growing Rights of Itlmach enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. Woo! You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it in your hand. 
put the rest of the bottom of your library in any order at the beginning of your end step. If you control four or more creatures, transform growing rights of it. This goes straight into the, the new dinosaur deck. And then if you flipped it, look at that land. Illamok, Cradle of the Sun, keyword Cradle. Taps for this grade, or it could tap to produce a green for each creature you control. Yeah, that's four, five, ten mana. Ooh, this is a staple in Commander, and I think that this card is fantastic. It will see play in Standard. Um, the Dinosaur deck loves this card. Next pack. Another rare wild card. X pack. Braided net. Braided net enters the battlefield with three net counters on it. Rem tap to remove a net counter from braided net. Tap another non land permanent. Its activated blaze can't be activated for as long as it remains tapped. And then you can craft with an artifact. For one blue, one colorless becomes a braided. Kupu. Uh, for one blue, three, and tap it. Draw a card for each artifact you control, and then put Braided Kupu into the owner's library third from the top. So it will draw a pile of cards, and then go, you'll see it three turns from there, and then you can start the shenanigans again. Like I said, blue artifact matters deck. Yeah, you're going to see this card. It's a card draw engine on top of that. You know, it's a card draw engine on top of that. It's uh, you're able to tap things down. Uh, it doesn't have to be done during your, your sorcery phase. So you could do it right before your opponent attacks to so be able to tap down their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I could see it being played in an artifact matters deck. Next pack. Palani's Hatcher. So the red green dinosaur deck is gonna love this card. Why? Because the you know it's not just a five three for five, but other dinosaurs you control have haste. Yes, it gives all of your dinos haste. Super necessary for dinosaur decks because it, you know you can you play a dinosaur, it dies. Doesn't even get a chance to attack. Now you give it all your other dinosaurs haste. What makes it even better is when. Palanus Hatcher enters the battlefield. Create two zero one green dinosaur egg creature tokens at the beginning of your combat on your turn. If you control one or more eggs, sacrifice an egg, then create a three three green dinosaur creature token that has haste as long as this guy's still at play. So there you go. You pay five. You have a five three body for defending, and then you also are attacking for three, and you have another zero one for defense. And if you make it to your next turn, you're gonna have to be attacking for eleven for five mana. Yeah. Next pack. We're halfway through. <coughs> Excuse me. Another copy of the belligerent. I'm kind of belligerent about that. That treasure map. I don't want to see him. I just don't want to see him. Souls of the Lost. This is one of the cards I am thrilled about getting. It is a rare legend. It's a rare spirit token, a spirit creature. One black, one colorless. It is a star, star plus one as an additional cost to cast this spell. This card, a card or a sacrifice of permanent. I'm all about, you know, losing a land or discarding another creature because. Fathom, fathom, uh, fathomless Descent, Souls of the Lost, power is equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. The Graveyard Manage deck loves this card. This card is... I don't know which car, where it's going to go in the deck, but this deck likes this card. Next time. 24 packs left. Another rare wild card. Let's keep it going. Unstable, uh, unstable Glyph Bridge for two white, three colorless. When an unstable Glyph Bridge enters the battlefield, 
If you cast it, each player chooses a creature with power two or less that player controls. Then destroy all creatures except for the chosen creatures this way. Great, it's a board wipe that kills all but itty bitty creatures. All but the two or ones or, or zero of their choice, just one. Just one, so everyone's gonna have one card. And then you get the craft with artifact. So after you destroyed everything, if you have a bunch of artifacts that are now in your graveyard, you can pay five the following turn to make a 5-3 Sand Swirl Wonder Glyph. Artifact creature golem, flying. Whenever an opponent casts a spell during their turn, they can't attack you or a Planeswalker you control this turn. Each opponent who attacked you or a Planeswalker you control cannot, uh, you cannot attack, uh, cannot, cast spells this turn what wow that two two can't attack now you cast a spell and uh it's a five three flyer in addition to that after you just wipe the board will it see play yeah it'll see play will it see play immediately artifact manners deck will love it next pack Terror Tide, two black, two colorless, fathomless descent. All creatures get minus X minus X, where X is the number of permanent cards in your graveyard. It's a board wipe for the deck that really wants to put things in the graveyard. I, I guess if they get too far behind, they can wipe the board and then start to play their big nasties, but that's not really how that deck is, gonna, is played. So is it a good card? Yeah, will it see play? Since sideboards, for sure. For that Graveyard Matters deck. Next pack. Sunken Citadel. Land. Cave! Sunken Citadel enters the battlefield tapped. As it enters the battlefield, you get to choose a color. Tap to add a mana of the chosen color. So it's a land that comes into play tapped, and you get to choose a color. So if it's a land, you get to pick that color that you're missing. And it's a cave, which is great. And then the second part is at tap to add two mana of any of the chosen color. Spend this mana only to activate abilities of land sources. Is there many land sources? You know, caves. Caves are land sources, and this can produce two, two of the five. Yeah. Next pack. Molten Collapse. One red, one black. Sorcery. Choose one. If you descend this turn, you may choose both instead. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. I like killing planeswalkers. I like killing creatures. But the second one is kind of is a head scratch. Destroy target non-creature, non-land, permanent with mana value one or less. So it can kill a token. Or it can kill a cheap creature. Or, or not creature, but uh, another token. Uh, non-creature token of course um so maps or enchantment to roll tokens um tokens yeah the second part's a head scratcher very circumstantial next pack jade light spelunker this is was the box topper for uh boxes if you buy them at your local game store jade light spelunker one green X colorless, what you know, it's a 1 1 creature, Merfolk Scout. When Jade Light Spelunker enters the battlefield, it explores X times. Exploring X times, not creating X maps, it explores X times. So, if you really want to go through and, and look at the top three or four cards of your deck, or look at the top card repeatedly, you know, three times. So, if you pay four mana, you might have a 4 4. Or you have a chance of making a 2-2 and drawing two land. Well, let's see play. It goes in the Merfolk Commander deck. Other than that, I don't know. It might be a little slow, a little... You know, the environment right now, not, not fantastic. The Ever-Flowing Well. It's a rare legendary artifact when Ever-Flowing Well enters the battlefield for one blue, two colorless. Uh, you get a mill two cards, then draw two cards. So this can go in a variety, a couple different decks. You get the mill those pirate, uh, you know, pirate or merfolk or 
vampire or dinosaur cards into the graveyard, which you may need to do. And then you can draw two cards. And then descend eight. At the beginning of your upkeep, there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard. You get to transform the well. The mirrored pools. Taps to produce a blue. When you cast a permanent spell using mana produced by the mirror pools, up to one other target permanent control becomes a copy of that spell till end of turn. I think it's a lot going on with this card. I, it feels like it might have potential, but I think it might be a little slow. We'll see. Third belligerent. Card likes me. Uh, yeah, I don't need a play set of that card. Thanks, Wizards. Don't give me that crap. Chamil, the Inner Sun. Six drop mythic legendary artifact. Spells you control can't be countered. At the beginning of your end step, discover five. Yes, discover five. You know, spells can't be countered. Okay. At six drop, that's not great, but yeah, it's a great it's good trait. If you can get into play, if you cheat it into play, even better. But we give you an step. Discover five. Ooh. Free spill every turn costs five or less. Sign me up. Sign me up. That there's gonna be some cool cards that go along with that. Bridges, eager pillager. Seen it already. Next pack. Mythic wild card. 13 packs left. Magmatic Galleon. Another card I don't want to see any more of. Thousands, a thousand moons, Smithy. This card is cool. It's kind of, it can get really bonkers really fast, especially if you're playing with art, you know, with artifact mana stack. Or even, you know, the Rico Bunny Chords. L love being paired with this guy because it just gets even better. Because when you play, it counts as two primaries. Because 1,000 Sons Smithy enters the battlefield. Create a white gnome soldier artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control. It's not the same as Rico Bunny Core, but it's a big but. It's still pretty cool. And then at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, so beginning of your next turn, if you got five or more um, untapped artifacts and or creatures, you uh, you can tap five of them. And then if you, do, you get to transform the Thousand Moon Smithy. When you transform it, it becomes a Barracks of the Thousand. <laughs> this is gross. It has to produce white. Whenever you cast an artifact or creature spell using the, the mana produced by Barracks of the Thousand Sun, create a white gnome soldier artifact creature with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control, making big creatures every single turn that you play a permanent. Well, not a permanent, it's artifact or creature. So it's, yeah. I got this guy card out and was able to transform it at the pre-release. Game over. Game over. Will he play? It might be a little slow. We'll see. Restless Ridge Line. Restless Ridge Line is one of the new uh, friendly color creature lands. It, uh, I, I think Jerry's still out on that. Those. This one's a, a decent size, three, four. And then another target creature control gets plus two, plus zero, and you get to untap it when this creature attacks. So when you pay four and tax, you need five land. And another creature in play to make it super beneficial. Yeah. Another Polanyi's Hatcher. Nine more packs. J Lang Spelunker. Terror Tide. I'm um, getting some of the crappy rares. Dupes, dupes of the crappy rares. Mythic. Chimil the Inner Sun. I'll have to try build, working with that card. We'll see what happens. Deep Root Pilgrimage. 
one blue, one colorless enchantment. Whenever one or more non-token merfolk you control become tapped, create a one-one blue merfolk creature token with hexproof. Yeah, I'm gonna tag him with some merfolk, making more merfolk. Yeah. Convoke. Screams it. Screams convoke. Okay. Restless vents. Let's see, descend when you attack with it. So for four lands, you attack with a two, three and descend and then draw a card. Not really descend, it's discard a card. You know what I mean. We're in the sky, it's, uh, I've opened three of those now. Don't need any more. Soul Cleaver is number two. I can see what pack of cards are coming up. Reason why you want to use your wild cards. Pugnacious Hammer Skull. I am a huge fan of this 6-6 six, six for one green, two color of this creature dinosaur. When a Pugnacious Hammer Skull attacks, well, you can, don't control another dinosaur or put a stun counter on it. Yes, I do want to give it Vigilance. Yes, I want to be able to have other dinosaurs in play. Yes this card will see play. I guarantee it will see some kind of play because I'm going to build the, the dinosaur deck. Oh yeah. Card's cool. Next pack. Last of the regular Lost Ixalan Arena packs. Okay. Threefold Thunder Hulk. Seven colorless mana artifact creature gnome zero zero when it enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on whenever threefold Excuse me. <coughs> oh. <clears throat> Whenever threefold a Thunder Hulk enters the battlefield or attacks, create a number one one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens equal to its power. So it's going to come into play with as a three three, and you get three plus uh, one one gnome artifact creature tokens. And you can sacrifice another artifact to put a plus one plus one counters on the threefold Thunder uh, Thunder Hulk. This card steamrolls. It is. Just a steamroll card. It gets even better if you're able to give it trample somehow. For those artifact mana decks, this is what you want to build up to. It's it produces tokens, it produces artifacts, it, it eats up those pesky artifacts you don't need anymore, and then it just spits out more artifacts as it attacks. If you're able to give it haste, even better. So I haven't seen these golden packs before. I uh Let's see what's in them. I'm sure there's a bunch of rares. At least there should be. Six card pack. First card, four necklaces. Next card, Deep Root Pilgrimage, which don't need. Restless Reef. Restless Reef, um, you know, for four mana and itself until end of turn, Restless Reef becomes a four, four blue and black shark creature with that touch. It's still land whenever Restless Reef attacks target player at Mills for cards, including it could be you yourself to be able to have those graveyard matters that could be able to trigger faster for descent or be able to just put more bodies in the graveyard. I, uh, five land. Five land's kind of hard. Valiant Ve Veteran. Brass, Brass's Tunnel Grinder. Uh, yes, this card is phenomenal. This card's great. I, I uh, cannot wait to put this in a, a couple of my red decks for EDH. Will it see play in the Artifacts Matters deck in Standard? It might be a little slow. It might be a little slow at, at three. It lets you draw cards. I guess you did a descend, but the big payoff is Teclatin, the Searing Rift, cast produce red. And whenever you cast a permanent spell using the ma using mana produced by Teclatin, the Searing Rift, discover X where X is that spell's mana value. Yeah, discovering X every turn. Ooh, ooh. Good, and a brush line. Golden pack, number two. Another Galta. Jace, the perfected mind. I think I got three of those now. 
Helenius Hatcher, don't need any more of those. As Zoltz, the deepest betrayal. This card's cool for two black, three colorless, four, four flying lifelink ledger creature, bat god. Bat god. Bat god. Is that a Batman? No, it's a bat god. Flying lifelink, four, four. Whenever uh, Axial uh, attacks, each opponent discards a card. For each opponent who can't, you draw a card. Whenever an opponent discards a land card, create a 1-1 one, one black bat creature token with flying. And then, when it dies, return to the battlefield tapped and transformed under its own owner's control. This is going straight in one of my black decks for a commander. And then... Temple it transforms the Temple of Dead when it dies. Temple of Dead taps to produce a black or a black and two colorless transform it. Uh, Temple of the Dead back to the uh, back god. Activate only if a player has one or fewer cards in hand and only as a sorcery. If a player, a player, a player, not an opponent, this is a player. So late game, this is just four four life linker that the bat came back the very next day. Expel the interlopers. Great removal card. Bedrock Tortoise. First one we've seen for Arena. One green, three colorless creature. Turtle, as long as it's your turn. Creatures you control have hex proof. Each creature you control with toughness greater than its power. Assigns combat damage equal to, uh, to its toughness rather than its power. I need to get one of these for my wife's EDH. Uh, 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 yeah, one of my wife's uh, commander decks. The reason why is because she plays Treefold. Yes, another card that lets that have the ability to be able to give make creatures do damage equal to their toughness is welcome in that deck. That makes it like five in that deck. Woo! Next pack. Nisa Ascended Animus. Good card. Preacher of the Schism. This card is interesting for one black, two colorless creature vampire cleric. 2-4 Death Touch. So right there, it's got a big pile of text on it. Let's go ahead and read it. Whenever Preacher of the Schism attacks the player with the most life or tied with the most life, you get to create a 1-1 Vampire Creature token with lifelink. So you're creating blockers and you're attacking with a Death Touch, death touch Creature. Great. Then whenever a Preacher of the Schism attacks while you have the most life or tied for the most life, you get to draw a card. And you lose one life. So if you and your opponent are tied, let's say you're both at 20, you're going to be losing a life and creating a vampire token at the same time. Yes, you're going to be getting tons of card advantage with this card if it's the first year, time you're, there's an attack being made. One thing you got to be aware of is, though, a 2-4 for 3. Good blocker, great blocker. If you're able to get in there... Get some pumps in there. Be able to give this guy some, you know, that halberd. Mm. Give it vigilance. Ooh, strong diabolic intact. Next card, glistening dawn. Amelia, which we've already seen once today. And here he is warcrafting. Continue. Two packs left. These gold packs, they're fun. Queen's Bay Paladin, we've, we've seen. Angel of Wrath. Another Bedrock Tortoise. I'm at perfection. Well of the Forgotten. This card is cool. I like this card. I'm going to play this in my graveyard. This is probably going to be the only non-permanent spell in my Graveyard Matters deck. Well of the Forgotten. One, one blue, one black. Sorcery to send eight. Choose one. If there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, as you cast a spell, choose one or more instead. Great. Let's go ahead and read both ability or all three abilities. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Great. Put it back in your hand, buddy. Target opponent discards a card. Okay. It's the only card in your hand. Put it back in your hand and you have to discard it. And then lastly, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Oh man, Graveyard Matters deck loves this card. You're fixing your fixing your draws, you're drawing an extra card, you're able to 
force people to put permanents back in their hands, and then you're forcing them to discard. Oh my god! For two, two mana, this card is fantastic. I'm a big fan. I'm glad I got one. Last pack of the video. So I want to take the time to say thank you for very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed watching it watching and hearing my comments if there's anything you disagree with please put it in the comments below i want to know what your opinions are i don't really listen to anybody else because i don't have time i've got kids and a wife and i try to play as much as i can so if you like this kind of content please like and subscribe and then also check me out on patreon my patreons help me produce these videos they help me pay for the all, all the stuff that you see here as well as uh, uh my own pocketbook right now so I really appreciate all you guys' time. And until next time, let's go ahead and watch this last pack. Invasion of Ragnarka. I'm a fan of that card. Unctus Grand Me Mechatark. Gradual of Lotharin. What? Don't give me these non-standard legal cards. Chamil the Inner Sun. Okay. I don't need any more of those. Mazalan... Mazalani, the Great Door. Three cost legendary artifact. Well, this card I think is freaking cool. I like this card, especially in the Graveyard Matters deck. So, what's it do? It taps to draw a card and then discard a card. Fill in the Graveyard's great, especially when you could go through and replace a card that you don't need. You know, it might be a land, it might be a creature, it might be. Now, something that might not be big enough to deal with what's what's in play. You need to get answers. Let's go ahead and drop the crap and go dig for something better. And, or you can pay four, tap it, transform the great door, activate only if there are four more permanent types among cards in your graveyard. Artifact, battle, creature, enchantment, land, and planeswalker are permanent types. Yeah, my, my particular deck does not have any of the... Um, doesn't have any enchantments, but doesn't have planeswalkers, creatures, land, and then it might have, it may have some artifacts coming into it. I haven't, I don't think there's any battles that are worthwhile in there yet, but let's wait and see. When you uh, flip it over, it comes the core, legendary land, fathomless descent, tasks reduce X mana of any one color where X is the number of permanent cards in your graveyard. Wow. If you need mana, here you go. It's gonna get produce a ton of mana if you need it. Personally, I'd rather keep it in the uh, the uh, the great door form as long as I can. And the last card, pile on. Well, thanks you very much for watching. And until next time, have a fantastic day and keep them rolling. And thank you for watching. If you enjoy this video, please take the time to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to stay updated. Have a great day and keep them rolling.